Hello hackers, welcome back to Pwn College. We're talking about advanced exploitation, specifically race conditions in the Linux kernel. Um, why are we talking about this? Well, because race conditions happen in the Linux kernel. The kernel is implicitly concurrent. Uh, if you have a kernel entry point, the system call, including a um, very common one, ioctl, is a common source of these issues. Um, a, um, a file access, let's say you've written a file system driver that runs in the kernel. Um, any sort of uh, interrupt uh, handlers, if you're doing something really crazy. All of this stuff can be um, triggered by user space simultaneously, concurrently. Um, by many different user space processes running and uh, interacting with these um, kernel resources all at once. Uh, so kernel code must be written with concurrency in mind and of course, oftentimes it is not. Uh, whoops, let's take a look. Yeah, that shouldn't that was a preview of things to come. Um, let's take a look at uh, what happens when kernel code is not written with um, uh, concurrency in mind. Um, here we have a uh, version of one of your race condition challenges, but written for the kernel. We have an ioctl. Um, the kernel div uh, driver registers slash proc slash pwn college ioctl. It has four ioctl um, uh, um, numbers and uh, it has login uh, which sets your privilege level to one admin which sets it to two but only if you already know the flag that is the password for administrative access sudo which once you have administrative access of greater than one um, sets your uh, sets your your uh, real uh, and effective and so forth user IDs to zero. This is exactly what a kernel exploit would do. Um, and a uh, logout which decrements your privilege level. This is basically a kernel module pseudo in some crazy way, a very, very uh, hacked up version. The problem of course is the privilege level is a global variable. This kernel module makes the assumption that only one thread will be accessing it at one time, but that is definitely not the case. Kernel resources can be accessed concurrently. Um, of course, the attack here is similar as baby race. This decrement, um, if we can set up a race where we pass privilege level of one, we obviously don't know the flag, so we can't make privilege level be two. If we pass um, the check that, that checks for privilege level, privilege level being set, um, and uh, if we get here concurrently with two threads at the same time or two proxies at the same time doing the pwn logout ioctl number, they will each decrement and we will end up with a privilege level of negative one. This is an unsigned int. So because of that, this check will now pass. Privilege level will be 4 billion something, which is greater than 1, and we will become root. So I created an attack that we can use to explore this concept. Very simple. Spin off uh, first. This is actually pointless. All right. That was a leftover from a previous sandbox thing. Um, first, we uh, spin up four workers, um, and in each worker, we do a different thing, or in one worker, we do uh, the login. This will um, log in with uh, uh, password secret, which is from the kernel module. It has to be secret. This, by the way, is very, very unsafe uh, kernel programming practices. You should never access user space directly, and this is user space. I should have copied it from user and then accessed it, but I wanted a concise example. Um, 
So we, we have one thread that's always logging in. We have one thread that's, or we have three threads that are always logging out, right? The idea, of course, we want to uh, hit with three different threads or two different threads at the same time in here to decrement that twice. And then my main thread is just uh, waiting to become root. And in the meantime, it is hitting that pseudo ioctal over and over and over. Once I win, it kills the workers and executes a shell. And of course, I don't need dash p here because this sets the real effective and saved user IDs all to zero. So shell is perfectly happy, bin sh is perfectly happy being root. All right, let's compile that, launch the kernel. load up the module and become the CTF user. And let's do this. That was fast and we're root. All right, one thing I wanna point out to stress that we need to hit the logout uh, twice. So this logout, we need to get in here with two processes at the same time. If you just have one process that does the login, one process that does the logout, this will never succeed. I hope this doesn't make me a liar. Oh, I didn't need to restart that. All right. Okay, here we go. All right, here we go. No luck, and it'll never finish because of course, we are no longer racing. We need to race two logout actions into here at the same time. Um, so that's a pretty standard uh, race condition that we've explored. And it uh, happens a lot in the kernel. Um, this is despite the fact that the kernel, of course, has um, um, what's what, what are they called? Mechanisms for preventing this. The kernel has mutexes, semaphores, specialized semaphores made for uh, very fast um, uh, access of like where multiple. Uh, threats can read a value and one thread can write it. There's just gen generic mutex and step fours, all sorts of good stuff. The generic mutex interface is the simplest. It's actually super simple. Um, it's almost exactly like the pthread mutex interface. You uh, uh, declare it somewhere and then you lock, unlock. Super simple. Um, but it is not easy to understand what resources can be impacted by different threads, especially in complex code. Um, and we can see this from the fact that errors persist a lot. Uh, well, let me fix this slide one second. All right, uh, errors persist a lot. Um, just this year, uh, there have been 20 CVEs in various kernels, not just in the Linux kernel, um, that are specific to race conditions. Um, in uh, 2017, uh, kind of the, the attempt to automatically detect these sort of errors has started up. Um, traditionally, these errors were identified manually and it is a um, pain to do so, uh, to say the least. Um, it's in the example that we looked at, it was very obvious where there was a, a race condition and an unsafe access of a global variable, but these happen in uh, complex code in the Linux kernel all the time. Dr. Checker published in 2017 found 63 race conditions exactly like this, unsafe access of global variables um, in uh, different versions of Android, uh, which of course is Linux kernel. In 2019, Google released uh, the kernel concurrency sanitizer that found hundreds, I, I see numbers as much as 300 um, of races in the Linux kernel and in 2019 
and 2020, there have been more academic work, uh, works that, that have created techniques to identify race conditions in the kernel, um, in file systems, in device drivers, and all sorts of things. Um, the reason I have these four specifically up here, they're all open source. You can actually grab Dr. Checker or grab uh, KCSAN, actually. KCSAN is, as far as I am aware, merged in to the uh, Linux kernel uh, mainline source. Um, so you can actually play around with it um, and build your own fuzzers and try to trigger uh, race conditions. Um, I should mention this KCSAN specifically is for detecting the race conditions. Dr. Checker is a static analysis tool. It doesn't actually run the Linux kernel, it just looks at the source code. Um, and then these techniques combine uh, triggering of system calls themselves with an analysis to identify when race conditions are hit. Um, the takeaway, of course, is that this is still a major problem. These four techniques represent hundreds and hundreds of race conditions found in the Linux kernel alone in the last uh, three years. Um, or the last four years, I guess, uh, if you include 2017. Um, and, and we're still, this is still happening. 2017 was really, was a high point in race conditions in the kernel, but over the last couple of years, there have been very stable amounts of race conditions found. So, which tells me that there's a lot left to find. Um, of course, in your challenge problems, you'll find some, but maybe you'll find some in the real world one day as well. Good luck.